Hi everybody, I'm coming to you really quickly talking about um, transitioning your child from high school to adulthood and the things you might need to know uh, while they're in high school. I had an email by um, one of my buddies in the, on Block Talk Radio and they wanted to know a little bit more information about that. So I'm going to give you uh, a quick glance at what you probably would need. First of all, everything that your child needs to do for transitioning job experience and all that you need to get that started in their IEP individual educational plan um, when they become a freshman if not even early in junior high you can ask for the IEP to address those issues and um, another thing when your IEP is made for your child you really need to take your time and look at it think about it before signing it They'll tell you to sign it if you agree right now, but think about that. Sometimes you're stressed, you're a little upset about it, and you don't know sometimes. You can talk it over with your child therapist, maybe his pediatrician, and get some good informed information from them. Okay, well from my email, they want to know about high school transition and junior high transition. So I'm saying you would want to start that process in junior high and uh, address life skills and things to be able to take care of themselves. Okay, the freshman year, they need to identify 10 members for individual education plan, plan, the case conference, okay? Begin asking personal centered planning, PCP, personal centered planning. Question to assist with steps in driving your IEP to your vision of the future. Determine the graduation status, diploma, or certificate of completion and develop a plan to obtain this goal beginning ask the eighth grade and after every year you ask this are they on a diploma path or are they on a personal uh, just for a certificate of completion uh, create a course of study based on the above goals academic or vocational okay sometimes they might need uh, they can finish high school and go on to college. Some children are able to do that. So don't, don't deny your child that if they need to just work a little harder. A lot of children can go to school to the 21. So don't let anyone talk you out of that. If you know your child can achieve the goals after a amount of time, it may take them a little longer, but have a plan. And it's called personal center planning. And uh, your graduation status. Next, create a course of study based on the above goals, academics or vocational. I think I might have said that already. Okay, attend your IEP conference where the transitional plan will be developed to help you, you decide what to do after graduation. Begin talking about transitional services that are available at federal and state and local la levels. Vocational rehab services program, the Department of Workforce Development, Work One Service Program, the Social Security Administration, Medicaid, the Bureau of Developmental Disability Service, Adult Service Providers, a Community Rehabilitation Program, a Mental Health Center, an ERA Agency on Aging. That's funny when you have a young one, but they do work with disabled. Okay, next you need to follow up on a on the status of your Medicaid waiver application. Check every year. Make sure, especially if you move, did they get your new address? When they can't contact you, you get bumped off the lift really quickly, like six or less weeks. Make sure they know where you're at at all times. If an application has not been yet been completed, to do so immediately, okay? Stop today. If your child does not have to be, it might have, your child might have autism, but you can apply for all the waivers, not just one type. Apply for all of them, and your child could be selected on anyone. Right now here in Indianapolis, they are pulling off the list that people put, at, put on application in 1987. So you see how far back they're going. And your child has to wait on that list until they get the services. Okay? But I am going to tell you on another video how you can get some respite care, but not on this particular video, without the waiver. 
Have your parents sign a release information on vocational rehab. Okay, VR, vocational rehabilitation. If you plan to go to school after graduation, plan to check into schools that take PSAT if those schools require an admission test. Okay, then you need to bring forth your IEP showing that you're supposed to get a little extra time for taking tests. That is your freshman and sophomore years. And we're going to stop there. And I hope this information is helpful. I'm going to be making a series of blogs about this. And um, tomorrow we'll go over to junior year, what you need to know. So thanks for checking in with me and thanks for watching. And I'll be back. Also, I remember I wanted to talk about our little ones. Everyone needs to contact the fire department and the police department and let them know at your address you have a special needs person. You need to know, let them know that they are nonverbal or verbal or high functioning, not high functioning. They usually have a list to ask you because in the case of a fire, they might need to come in and they need to know this person won't answer back. They need to know that they still have this and they'll be having that information piped into the ear as they're traveling to your home if you're not able. Once again, you need to be putting a plan how you're going to get out of the house, how you, who's going to get the child, who's going to be responsible so everyone won't be running around trying to grab one child. Like I have more than one child, so every, me and my husband have a plan. He gets my son, Curtis, because he's a man, and he can carry the weight of Curtis. Curtis is 6'2", and he's a big boy. So we have a plan on how to get out. Also, the fire department knows exactly where we're at and the, the size of our house and where he his bedroom's at. So in case there is something that goes wrong and you can't get out, the child can't get out for some. You never know in the case of fire, and fire goes fast. Uh, you need to have a plan how you're going to get out of your house. Write it down. Make a, uh, a practice of it. Make a game of it. And so your child knows exactly how to get out and what to do and who's going to be where and what they're going to do. Let everybody know. Keep it open everywhere you go so you know, police included. Make current pictures of your child. Take them all the time so in case of a your child gets outside and somehow wanders away from you, have a system so you can track them. If your child doesn't pull off, a, uh, my son pulls off his mercy bracelet all the time. And so I started getting one big enough to put around his ankle, but he really doesn't like it. So as soon as he figures out how to get it off, he could have that off. You need to know how you're going to deal with these situations. And don't think it can't happen because it happens a lot. So... This is um, my blog for today, so you guys take care and take care of your good loved ones. Thank you.